This guy's from New Mexico. He has chihuahuas. And he's in here for a meeting, and he thought this would be great fun. So good for him. That's great. That would take a lot more chihuahuas to pull you down 4th Avenue. Like maybe and they'd have to have really yeah. big sweaters. <laughs> really big sweaters. <laughs> and as we see uh, Dieter uh, make his way down 4th Avenue, uh, Nicholas Petit mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. to the starting line. What's Rusher that? number 46 this year, and somebody that is a real threat to come away with a winner. Yeah. He's uh, had quite the season. He was third last year. It's his eighth I did rod. He was four mid-distance races in a row this year. Though. That he's done very Just well Just blew him away. I mean, you know, that's really some incredible uh, training. But he also went and got a couple dogs from uh, Jesse Holmes to race with. It'll so. be interesting to see what kind of uh, combination they come up with. Now, uh, Jake, you're with us now, and you know a little bit about, about Nicholas. What do you think about this team? I mean, he is the biggest threat to the CV dynasty since uh, they started winning about six years ago. What he was able to put together last year was nothing short of incredible. He was not carrying any dogs. He was the fastest team that wasn't rotating dogs. Uh, and he finished less than three hours behind uh, the champion Mitch CV. Uh, what he's got going on is absolutely incredible. I've never seen somebody with such a, just a unique bond that he does have with his dog team. We're going to be able to see him, you know, a fast dog team that can run long, rest short, um, but he'll throw some things. He'll throw some interesting moves in there throughout the race. He'll do a eight hour rest here, a seven hour rest there where everyone else is doing four or fives and then he'll throw in a huge long run. So uh, he's an absolutely incredible musher gifted in the sport and uh, he is definitely here to race to win. He's also probably going to push the status quo for where he's going to take his 24. I believe I heard that he sent out about 3,500 pounds a gear, and he can take his 24s all the way up through Caltag. Um, so I could see him running long um, and, you know, really paving away and pushing hard uh, into his 24. Yeah, they, those dogs should be really tough. And, of course, he's, a lot of them are related, and he's named a bunch of them after famous mushers, so his lead dogs are usually Libby and Christy. Yeah. <laughs> he can't he's, beat that mistake. <laughs> we caught up with uh, Nicholas. Let's hear what he has to say. Nick, coming off a very successful race last year, taking third place, but you're known for not having a plan. We, we switching anything up this year? You're going to have a plan? The plan is to switch it up. <laughs> you know? Uh, the plan is to be ready for whatever might be, so we're ready for whatever might be. And you've had some success. I think you've essentially won most of the races you've entered this year. I guess how does that help you going into the Iditarod, which is the you know a longer race, obviously? Well, it's kind of handy when you already won a thousand miles of racing, <laughs> but uh, you know there's still another thousand miles to go. So, then what's happened in this season, you can't. I can't really count on it being with the result of course but these dogs i i'm starting to let go of the brake so it's fun and i guess you and that's nicholas petit coming down the street he's gonna have the pressure on him this year yes i, I love you i used to ask those questions too the mushers what's your strategy and you know you're never going to get a musher strategy from him uh, you have to look at your <laughs> dogs and figure out your strategy as you go you yeah. really do now he told me when he bought my dog box this fall here um <laughs> that he actually started out be checking the weather at farewell checkpoint out there at the, at the lodge mm -hmm. so that was kind of interesting well he's certainly somebody we want to keep our eye on as he goes around the corner and uh, as we're on Jeff King Corner, that's what I'm going to call it from now on. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Jeff will punch me when he sees me. But <laughs> I first met Nick up when I watched him finish his first race up in Nome, and nobody even was at the finish line because they thought he'd be in another 20 minutes. But he was so fast, he came in and surprised everybody. Let's go down to Rebecca Paul, who's out and about in the crowd. How you doing, Rebecca? <laughs> Do a lot of people know you? Well, I'm here with my new friend, Rachel Nick, from yeah. Bethel. Oh. We're on oh now. Gosh, we're on. <laughs> we are. Tell me about who you're cheering for. Peter Kaiser. And why is that? How do you feel you said when he started coming around with his dog? Because he's my classmate and I really I was crying for him when he was running. It was so awesome. I loved it. <laughs> is, is this your first time coming to the start of the uh, ceremonial start? From maybe 17 years ago, I never came here for a while. <laughs> did it meet your expectations? Yes, it did. 